Do you know how expensive passion fruit can be? It's outrageous to pay so much money for something that grows so easily. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Mean, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of passion fruit. Let's get into it. Did you hear that? That was a passion fruit dropping. They're bloody heavy. You wouldn't want that to hit you on the noggin. We had friends over for a barbie the other day and we took them for a walk around in the garden and we come across the passion fruits and one of them said, ugh, passion fruits, they grow like a weed. And we all laughed. It's true. Another true story was the fact that passion fruit was the first major food crop we grew when we moved here 13 years ago in 2006. Yeah, I know, another piece of trivia you don't care much about. Did you also know the purple passion fruit is the most popular and considered the best tasting variety? But I don't agree with that assessment at all. We're growing a green yellow variety that just grew wild on our property. So we decided to propagate it and it has an excellent taste. In fact, we prefer it to the purple ones. Also, I know several people who prefer the oblong banana passion fruit to the purple variety. So I guess it's personal preference combined with the evolved variety and where it's grown that influences how good different types are. Speaking of where it's grown, passion fruit vines are typically a subtropical to tropical plant originally from South America. So if you want to grow it in a colder climate, you can, but I recommend you grow them in a hothouse or greenhouse to give it that extra warmth or it likely will die through winter or not fruit at all. In temperate climates, it's still fine, below subtropical, but in places where it gets really cold, yeah, you're gonna have trouble growing this. Apparently the purple varieties withstand cool attempts, and this is likely true, and certainly what I've experienced with purple vines growing better through our winters, whereas the yellow dies back in midwinter. Tip number one, true to type. Ugh, I was gonna keep eating passion fruit throughout the video as a prop, but I'm fed up eating it already. I've had about half a dozen. So I'll just put that down for now. And don't worry about all this dead growth. This is normal. This time of year, our passion fruit vines die back. It's in the middle of winter. But I'll talk about that later. Oh, hold on, I'll use it one more time. Select a variety that is true to type, meaning that collect the seed from a passion fruit that will come back as the parent plant. Some varieties from the nursery are hybrid to improve taste or grafted onto a hardy rootstock to give them better disease resistance. But I'd prefer to find a variety that has these qualities anyway, right from seed, and grow them over and over again. If you've ever experienced a passion fruit vine that grows vigorously but doesn't fruit, it could be that the rootstock has taken over the grafted plant. Honestly, I wouldn't bother growing the grafted varieties. Simply crush the seeds right out of the dried up fruit and cover with potting mix, then keep them moist and after a few weeks they will have germinated and be ready for pricking out into individual pots. Let them grow into small plants and then plant them out a few feet apart. Here in the subtropics and with this type of passion fruit, it grows faster than hair on a mole. We planted these in January 2018 and about 16 months later, in April 2019, they're already providing their first fruit. And it's possible that in some locations or some other varieties, it could take up to three years to produce fruit. Passion fruit vines don't tend to live that long either, perhaps seven years max. We generally grow ours for about three to four years, maybe five years max, because the older the vines get, the less productive they become. And they also get diseases like woodiness virus. So I recommend renewal rather than persisting with old plants. Passion fruit will grow well in shaded positions, one of the few fruiting crops that do. It also grows well in full sun, and this versatility makes it one of our favorite food plants to grow. Tip number two, strong trellis. 
Passion fruit can become a big and heavy plant, especially if you're growing several vines all together on the one structure. I've got to be careful here that I don't trip over a passion fruit and fall flat on my face in my own YouTube video. So yeah, it's important that you get the structure nice and strong. And as you can see here, it's got its own structure and now it's taken over our gourd tunnel too. Our trellis here has a couple of posts that are fully cemented in, several other star picket posts in between, and attached to that is a strong wire trellising material. You can grow passion fruit in the general garden and it will intertwine and grow over trees and even in an ornamental garden, it works quite fine. And we see it growing down in the scrub here and also in our ornamental gardens around the property. But if you wanna get serious about growing a ton of passion fruit, you should really make a proper structure for it. And it's nothing better than a good, strong trellis like this. And then having a structure made of that Rio mesh is perfect where it can climb up and then straddle along the top and then hang the fruits down. Flower, fruits hanging down, makes them easier to harvest. And sometimes they'll just drop clean on your head, but it's a great way to grow passion fruit over a high structure like that and just let it sprawl out with plenty of room. That way it's not smothering out the rest of your garden, taking up valuable vegetable garden space or climbing in areas such as an ornamental garden where it gets targeted by animals and you can't control it as well. Tip number three, harvesting. Oh, how convenient. As I said earlier, our fruit are starting to ripen within about 16 months and not all the fruit ripens at once. That's a really good thing because then you don't end up getting a whole glut of fruit. So if you do need more than a few for a cake or something, you can save the pulp by freezing until you get enough. Having said that, the end of the season, which is usually winter or midwinter here, the vines do tend to produce the most fruit, which again is good because you can harvest and eat or store in bulk to use in the off season. I must admit at times it's hard to tell if there is a season at all for passion fruits here, because you can go around the property all year round and find a passion fruit ripening somewhere. Usually a passion fruit is ready to harvest when it changes fully in color, either to yellow or purple, and has a slight give when you press on the fruit. You'll also often find them falling from the vine and that's a key sign that they're ready to eat, even if they are looking green like this or a slight shade of what they're supposed to be. I probably should mention a few other points about this particular variety. Don't believe the rubbish on Google that green passion fruits are poisonous because that's not the case. The reason why many of these have not ripened fully to the full yellow is because A, the variety is more of a green tinge, B, they will ripen yellower early in the season when the weather's still warm. But as the weather cools down, or if we get a really cold winter like we have now, the passion fruits don't ripen as good. But that doesn't mean they're bad. They may still be green and the fruit may be a little more sour, but generally the pulp is still developed inside and perfectly good to eat. But yeah, if you are wondering why your passion fruits aren't ripening fully, that is the main reason. The good thing is often if you leave a few of those fruits that even are a bit green on the bench for several days, they will ripen and get a little sweeter. They may not change color to purple or to yellow, but they will sweeten a little if you wanna let them wait. But they certainly are not poisonous. Of course, you don't wanna be going and eating pulp that isn't ready yet or juicy. You don't wanna be eating a green dry pulp. I mean, that'd be a bit odd, but you get what I mean. You might also find that some might shrivel and this shriveling is generally a sign that it didn't quite make it. Sometimes the, the pulp inside is all right, but usually the pulp inside has either not developed properly or has dried up and the fruit is then not good to eat. Look, I don't mean to gloat, well, maybe just a little bit, but we grow so many of these that a few animals eating some of the fruit doesn't bother us at all. So we don't even try to net or keep the animals like possums away. Tip number four, pruning. Passion fruit vines mostly die back in winter or the colder months, especially where we are. 
so this is the time when we do most of our pruning. In some tropical climates it might not die back and if that's the case you still might need to prune to get rid of dead branches and let that plant breathe again to prevent diseases. So what I'm saying is prune as required. It won't hurt the vine and if anything it'll encourage more growth. Using this crop as an example we initially kept it from taking over our gourd tunnel by continuously pruning it back until we had enough of the gourds and then we let the passion fruit vines grow for it. As you can see the passion fruits and the gourds ended up as one somehow. Once all the fruits have ripened I'll prune this whole lot completely back to stems and mulch or chip it all for composting and then in spring it'll start growing back with a vengeance and we'll probably end up with as much fruit or if not more this next coming season. It's timely that our passion fruit vines are dying off now particularly on this trellis because once they die back and then I prune them back that will give more sunlight and energy to our tomato plants just as they are coming in to ripening. Tip number five, fertilizing. I was watching an old episode of Gardening Australia with Jane Edmondson in it, and she was explaining that in the old days, every passion fruit vine used to have a sheep's liver or ox heart stuck in the planting hole before they bunged the plant in. And apparently that helped with the passion fruit's growth because they love extra iron. I must admit I've never tried that, and I don't fertilize our passion fruit plants very often either. Contrary to popular advice that states that they are a fairly hungry plant. I find that they grow quite well without regular fertilizer and maybe that's because we grow them in good quality soil which is probably more important than fertilizing them regularly. We get plants popping up and growing all over our property and they mostly do well without any extra nutrients. Although if positioned in a forest like area, the rich soil is likely enough. Otherwise, when I do fertilize, it'll be in spring, at the start of the growing season, a few handfuls of chicken pellet manure or manures that are well rotted from our own poultry pens or a bit of commercial blood and bone just scattered around the base of the plants, that's all. And then I probably wouldn't fertilize them again throughout the whole season. Again, that does depend on the type of soil that you're growing them in. Perhaps if the soil is less nutritious, well then maybe it might need a bit of extra fertilizer and compost throughout the growing season. I wouldn't expect regular fertilizer to produce more fruit. In fact, it might do the opposite. It might encourage a whole lot of growth and less fruit. So definitely don't overdo it with love. So don't forget my five top tips. True to type, strong trellis, harvesting, pruning, and fertilizing. Do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of passion fruits, all from one passion fruit, just like I can. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big, passionate thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video around, especially if you really did like it, because other people might too. Thanks a lot for watching. I don't think I'm going to eat any more. There's about 10 passion fruits eaten during the making of this video. Bye for now. <sighs> they are good though. I know Nina loves them, my wife. Should I just finish one more off in front of you guys? Okay. I'm gonna tell you what, it's really hard to beat.